darlings. It's time to play Steel Rising all afternoon. <clears throat> ah. After a hectic morning, horking down lunch and fixing some technical issues, we are finally live. I spent the last few weeks going hard on Magic the Gathering, but one of the big things that's happened this year is we have played so many good single-player games, and in years past, I sort of just didn't even really pay attention to a lot of single-player game releases. But this year, it's just been a delight. I, I have been missing out on a lot of really good games, and Steel Rising is one that we've had our eye on for a little bit of time. It uh, obviously has combat and gameplay inspired from the FromSoft-style games. Um, but dude, just look at this blurb, okay? The art style and the setting is just, it's, it's atypical to say the least. Paris, 1789, the French Revolution has been suppressed with bloodshed by Louis XVI and his merciless mechanical army. What? Aegis, mysterious automaton masterpiece, must confront the king's army alone to save history in this challenging action RPG. Many of you may have seen my um, playing of the game Siberia on Mostly Walking, a very old adventure game, very old graphic adventure game. That even though, <laughs> from an adventure game perspective, even though on a, from an adventure game perspective, there there were some puzzles that were a little weird and a little wonky on that game. The the setting and the automatons and the mechanical industry in that game was mm, so good. And the bomb.com says alt history French Revolution was not on my bingo card. Right, right. In an era where we're seeing a lot of games not take interesting risks in style and setting, and just put them in interesting. Locations. Well, I shouldn't say not take risks, because obviously making a game is hard, but a lot of companies are just kind of sticking to the same tropes that I was thrilled to see this kind of look and feel. And looked at some of the graphics, looked at some of the screenshots, some of the info about it, and then was like, all right, I shall look no longer. So we can actually hop in and play the thing. A shout out uh, to Nacon for sponsoring today's stream. Uh, game is... A key is provided by them, and if you have any curiosity about checking the game out, well, stay here, because we're going to be playing for a few hours. But also, our friendly neighborhood bot is posting links to check the game out as it just released today. I will now click in window, get the new game. Uh, do I want to start a new game? What's assist mode? I'm going to say no, because I actually think that I'm the best player here. <clears throat> like, dude, look, look at the art style. I mean, says, what, what kind of game is this? Action RPG. Not of the Path of Exile sort about loot and hard, but more of like the challenging combat from soft style. Whoa. Oh, pardon. Bad opening cutscene today. Actually, I think I'm in the mood for games right now. How much longer are we to be kept here? We just simply watch as Paris burns from afar. The rabble arrives. Yeah, the, the, the timing. This is the price to be paid for spoiling the masses. You don't understand, Gabrielle. The king sent us here long before the city went up in flames. Turn this up. He knew what was about to transpire. <clears throat> I think he is somehow involved in these events. It is but a jade. True, he can be misguided and somewhat short tempered at times, but he's no Nero. Then why have we been given no news for so long? He's no Nero. He isn't. He's all for Gabrielle. The children. They'll soon be out of harm's way. I am most certain of it. Monsieur Clary will take good care of them. For now, at least, we are safe. Safe? Vraiment? Where are the Chateau Guards? I love this mix protected. of the French just preferred to use with a British a accent. <laughs> <clears throat> Guards or jailers? They won't even let us leave this room, Gabriel. Guards or jailers? Okay. He has lost his mind to grief. First, our darling. So Call me Raven once the mix is weird. Then our beloved son. So I think there was a research piece oh, done on this. Sweet angel. No. Oh. They didn't let me say goodbye. I wasn't even allowed to see you. <laughs> 
Excuse me. Inside me is, is crying out, telling me he's still of this world at, at times. I think I hear him calling to me. I'm so afraid. Am I the kid? Fear <clears throat> the queen. Everything, everything horrifies me. The king's wrath, his army of indefatigable automats that Monsieur de Vaucanson has built for him. The charlatans who advise him, who are now more powerful than ministers. What happened to my son? Curious is, do people really stand around holding their hands like that? I mean, I do when I'm not alive. I won't let any harm come to them. This I <clears throat> promise you. But how? Do you not see that we're prisoners here? All is not All right, lost. I think I'm supposed to feel sympathetic for them. That is not hostile to but us. for me, this new bodyguard of yours. I'm here to level up. Oh, customize Aegis. Now, now I'm an uh, automaton. I've clicked out of the window. That's what's going on. <clears throat> All right, material. Oh, dude, I want that chrome. Look at my arms. Dude, this gold looks rad. That's actually an interesting choice with the face. Where, like, you want to have someone... I mean, our, our character is a mechanical automaton. Or automaton. You know, I don't know exactly how it's pronounced, and I've always pronounced it differently every single time I've said it. But, um... Going with a more realistic face, I think, is very reasonable here. And then making the arms, like, super mechanized. Wigs. All right. All right, what kind of wig are we in the mood for? It's automaton. I like automaton. That's what I really like. What kind of wig am I in the mood for? I mean, frankly, this this one's just fine. How about a little ponytail? I think I could do a little little ponytail. Seems good. Oh my god, this one. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my god, that's like very uncanny valley for me. I'll go with the default one. I like the default one. Alright. I'm gonna go with this. Because I actually doubt I'm gonna be able to see much of the back of the character's head. Alright. Ooh, character class. Okay. <clears throat> Bodyguard. Heavy weapon, special move block. Alright. Alright. Projectile that can temporarily immobilize an enemy. Sure. Bodyguards rely on their strength to withstand hits and deal heavy physical damage to enemies. This this does sound like me. This does sound like me. Do I get to start with a heavy weapon? Uh, increases health and balance. Engineering plus two. You know, I, whenever I'm at the point where I'm in a game and it's asking me which class I want to do, I no longer actually read a lot of the details. <laughs> I, I, I'm just like, dude, what seems the coolest? Because right now, dude, I have a giant hammer. Am I understanding correctly? Oh, yeah. Gribovol Albaud. Heavy weapon, special move, a ranged attack. Projectile that can knock over an enemy? Sure. Yep, not interested in the soldier. Dancer. Light weapon, special move, block. Oh, is this like a fan? Oh, interesting. Armored fans. Oh yeah, dude. Hey, that's you. Look, it's it's all of you, my armored fans. Let's see. Uh, flame grenade, explosive projectile that can ignite an enemy. I mean, let me tell you, I, I am really interested in the bodyguard so far. Alchemist. Glass core batons. Light weapon, special move weapon is infused with frost for a few seconds. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's really interesting. Alchemists favor alchemical weapons that can ignite, freeze, or electrocute their enemies and cause persistent elemental afflictions. You know... Bodyguard looked great to me. Alright, we're doing this. A giant hammer, yeah. <clears throat> this machine that is now somehow able to speak understand what we say to it. I, I gotta make a comment about the British accents in a moment. Yes, but it is loyal to you. That's all that matters. 
If it managed to escape the chateau, it could be your eyes and ears in Paris. Oh, I see. Uh-oh. Agent Day-9. Perchance, the other automats were to go after it? Automats. You won't attempt anything foolish. I cannot lose you, Gabrielle. Not now. Oh, I gotta comment on these British accents. En Francais. Aegis? Madame. Oh my god, the that's so creepy. I love being a creeper. Go and find Vaucanson at his workshop. Niles Invalide. He surely holds the secret to these tireless automats. And perhaps he will know something about the death of my son. Let me be honest. How am I to leave the chateau grounds? I couldn't care less about the death of her Thank son. I'm about to gain levels, the okay? Side of the grounds. <clears throat> From there you can take a boat to Paris. <laughs> You wanted to find Vaucanson? Vraiment? What if he is the one who is responsible for this unrest? What Vaucanson has done, ma chère. Only Vaucanson can undo. Alright, alright. I'm getting a sense of the world. I'm getting a sense of some characters. Here's my understanding. Um, so first of all, here, here's my understanding of the world. The game wants me to have some sort of plot-driven scapegoat to go for. Right? Let's find this young woman's son. But I can assume that Vaucanson created the automatons that are protecting slash the, the tool of power for the king. And so we're that automaton. The automaton here to save them all. And um, also, I think I have my graphic settings set to like super low just to make sure that the CPU usage isn't too high. I had some tech issues this morning, so I'm just trying to monitor things. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can actually crank this up. Video. Is it under gra graphics quality? Uh? Oh? Uh? Uh? Ultra? All right, I'm going to save and quit. Let's see what this looks like on Ultra. Let's see if I... All right, all right, all right. My technical issues on my PC are going to get in the way. I'm just going to go back to low, because for these sorts of games, I actually just care primarily about the gameplay. And the style looks fine. All right. But yeah, no, so about the British accent, like, I know that this is something that has happened a lot in, like, Regency-style shows, a lot of which were made in England. And so there was this pattern of, like, decades of period piece dramas made in England where all the actors have English accents. And that's carried over into other media where um, it's almost like this internal logic and consistency like, for instance, the word poisonous means if you eat it, you will get poisoned. Venomous means if it bites you, you get poisoned. But games will often use poisonous because that word is better understood broadly than venomous, right? And so, like, for instance, there's this amazing show called The Great that takes place in Russia. Everyone has British accents, all of them. And it's just like a conceit of the genre. And it's kind of kind of cute to have it here. All right, so this is a Souls-like game. Lock on. B is dodge. Great. Oh my God! My hand is the hammer. Excellent. Quick access belt. Great. You can assign consumables to the quick belt. Great. Go to the inventory and assign oil burette to the belt. Continue. All right, oil burette. The day Aegis was assigned to the queen as a bodyguard, she was given this metal receptacle containing a precious restorative oil. Ah, oil me up, baby. Now powered by unlimited energy, she can use it to repair it. Yep, yep, it's, it's a health potion. Health potion with a codex. Put it in this slot. Petrification grenade, I'll put it in this slot. Aegis returned to the last vessel. Okay, last bonfire, sure. And also, I'm going to just make sure that I can remove some of the motion when you're walking. 
All right. Game controls. These are the controls. Control options. Vibration. We always want the vibration. Subtitles. Uh, subtitle size. Let's, let's make them large. There we go. Subtitle background. That's all right. Camera effects. I don't know exactly what that means. Hat visibility. Oh, dude, I always want the hat visibility. Are you kidding me? Confirm. All right, this is all fine. Great. Prepare ages using a consumable. All right. Do I have a jump? Oh, I have a jump. I have quite a leap. Oh, I can jump and grip ledges? Oh, dude. <laughs> you know, this is this is kind of in line with what I was saying earlier about each weapon has a special attack in your defense. All right, I have a stamina meter. Great. This is weird. This is on left trigger instead of left bumper. Oh my god. I like seeing damage numbers. I don't know if any of you played the original Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It was like the first game that I've, I've played, and even one that I haven't seen a lot of other games do, where you collect these relics that let you do really powerful things, like double jump, but some of the relics just allowed you to see damage numbers and allowed you to see additional information about enemies. And it was like it was unlocking extra components and features in the game. Whoa, look at how quickly you can dodge roll. Oh my god, I can jump in the air and swing and not fall. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. What happens? What happens? All right, actions consume endurance. Sure, when Aegis runs out of endurance, her gears overheat and she can no longer perform. She cannot attack, jump, dodge, sprint. When overheated, you can trigger rapid cooling, Y, which can instantly restore an amount of endurance depending upon your timing. However, this inflicts a certain amount of frost damage. Whoa! This is, a, this is an interesting mechanic. All right, continue. Oh, man. That is... That is... That is some in-game, in-world logic. What I mean by that is, like, we wanted a mechanic to allow you to interact with your bar if you ran out of stamina. So here, if I just, like, dash a bunch. So let's see. Oh, man, that's interesting. So there's like a timing mini game around overheating where if you use too much, you can't do anything, but then you can hit Y to take a little bit of frost damage. Okay, so that's the mechanic is hit the button at the right time to get the stamina back because that's fun to have some active interaction, you know, something like active reload in the Gears of War games. But I like that it's like rapid cooling. You're overheating, so you need cooling. Does this actually take that much stamina? Oh, I see. I can't actually regain stamina when I am blocking. Nice. Wow, these guys are very gentle. Hammer swings so fucking slow. Pick up. All right. All right, so if I push in the thumbstick, that's what lets me run. Rusty key, I assume, will open this. All right, nice. 
assuming blocking is only one direction. Oh, I can actually move it while, while it's held. So I want to do a test. Is there, is there a nerd out here? There you are. So if I block like this... Yeah, direction matters. Uh-oh. Oh, I track? Hell yeah. Yeah, I like the, the R2 because it, it stuns. Staggers. Alchemical capsule. Now, what's an alchemical capsule? If I hit this... So... Oh my god. Oh my god, there's content in here. Okay, 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 wait, wait. Inventory. Essence of a lesser spirit. Oh, great, yeah, okay, so this is... Probably going to be my currency, right? And is there is there a map or anything? Map of Paris. Oh my god. Someone said something to me earlier. Like three weeks ago. They said, oh yeah, we're going to put a map on it. And I said, why? And he says, because maps are cool. And I've never heard such a simple statement be so true before. So, I assume that I... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, of course, that's me. You can see my gross little little mouth line right there. <laughs> Main quest, side quest characters. Yeah, I actually think that this is like the right way to do maps. Where it's not trying incredibly hard to be super realistic. Oh, I see. It's one of these hold ones. The area. The gardens. Dude, it is weird to be able to jump. So I cannot jump up there. Activating Vestals. Activating mean, Vestal creates a checkpoint where Aegis will be repaired if she breaks. Here, Aegis can upgrade attributes. Upgrade equipment. Obtain equipment. Oh, you can obtain equipment here. So it's kind of like a blacksmith... Upgrade rest. Alright. What up, Zeskura? Oh my god! Mm, 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 mm. Boutique? Do you see how it was slowly drifting up? I haven't actually used this controller in a while, and I'm re reminded now that, um, this controller's up stick is busted a little bit. Purchase sell, so I can sell these. Are these two different currencies? Or is that the number in the cost? So I have 20 and each one can be sold. Okay, so alchemical capsules, I believe, are some sort of resource. Power affinity. Okay. All right. So I am understanding these stats. All right. Okay. 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 So um, this this looks like a more streamlined version of some of the stuff that exists in other you know FromSoft style combat games. Because I, I I don't know what the term is for it. Because I know that like when Dota was or when League of Legends was made, they said no no no. There is a genre called MOBA. And Dota and League are MOBAs. Like, <laughs> I want, is there a term for, I almost want to call it like a, like a plotting combat, right? A very deliberate plotting combat RPG. But, so, if I have these different stats, power, agility, and alchemy, which I assume are the equivalent of strength, intelligence, and agility, and the damage on my hammer scales with my strength, right? Okay. Weight heavy? I don't know what that means yet. Armor? Can I purchase some stuff? Oh, I can just purchase... Oh, so I can actually just switch class, basically. I can just, like, get the stuff from the other one. 
Actually, what 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 are my what's my character? Who am I? Oh, power durability. What's the difference between vigor? Okay, so power will increase my physical damage and impact. I don't know what impact means. Is there a help? Okay. Theodon Aratai says, if I recall correctly, MOBA was a term specifically coined by Riot to distance themselves from Dota. Yeah, Riot has been god tier at this. They invented the term MOBA because people were calling League a Dota clone. And League is not a Dota clone. The gameplay and the games are fucking different. And they share some similar structure. Um, and then they did the same thing around Valorant, where they call it a tactical shooter instead of uh, CSGO plus classes, which is kind of how people communicate and understand it. Agility improves immobilization. So this makes sense that elemental alchemy will, if this is a more intelligence associated stat. This actually helps my defenses. That's interesting to me. Engineering. Affliction multiplier. What is that? Oh my god. So vigor is endurance. Okay, so my endurance, I assume... Oh, that... You know, that's, that's, that's like my stamina bar. That's my combat resource. And this is my health resource. So, I always want power. So I'm a bodyguard, so I got bonus engineering and bonus durability. All right, and what are module slots? Requires three keys to upgrade. Oh, sick, okay. So this reminds me a bit of passives from Hollow Knight, where I assume I'm gonna insert some sort of passive tuner on me. Huge fan of this mechanic, huge fan of this. I can also upgrade this, and I need bronze ingot. Great. Improves my power scaling. Great. Burette. All right. So I actually want to see my move sets a little bit. All right, uh, do you want to see the movesets too? Come on up. Come on, let's look at the movesets. Yeah, I hear you. Ow! Just get in here. Just pick. Do you want to go up or do you want to go down? Okay, so if I go weak, weak, weak. So this is bumper. So what if I do a weak swing and then a strong attack? It actually just interrupts that. All right, hold on. I overheated. All right, so what if I do right trigger into right trigger? So it's a slam and a swing up, and if I do a slam... Okay, so I, it looks like I have a three-hit combo that ends with light swings. All right, come up, sweetheart. Is there a graphic if we run out of stamina? I mean, it's like my controller vibrates like crazy in the bottom left. All right. All right, kitten. All right, kitten. Oh, dude, dude, you gotta, dude, stop. Ah, oh, fuck. I hope this works. Oh god. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, Sheriff. <laughs> no, I love you too, but... Alright, she's knocked my headphones out. Can I charge this? A little low on stamina. Holy oh, shit. How much damage is that? Ow! Ow. Alright, well. The Sheriff is a... Louise... <laughs> We the 16th sympathizer. Yeah, you're being a bad kid. Alright. Let me... Ouch! Alright, now I think I'll be able to play the game. Um, I think that the, the way that this game's difficulty settings work is if your cat's in the room, it's fucking more difficult.
Dude, the dashes are really fast. Look, dash, 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 dash. I don't know if there's inv uh, invulnerability frames. Let's go ahead and test that one out. The boss gets... Lock on when the red end... Oh! God. Ordinary oil vial. What's, okay, I want to try this petrification grenade. Ah! Ow! Alright, so let me... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So, and, and is this a replenishing resource? Don't use a hammer when you have feet. Yeah, oil is hell. So that way I can function as a well-oiled machine. Ha, 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 ha. Be able to level up soon. Boo! Day nine, boo! Boss fight? Uh oh, we got the some. Swiss guard killed by the automats that replaced them. Oh yeah, grizzly, grizzly. Because I know a lot of the FromSoft games, just like, there's no dialogue, there's no exposition, there's no, like, more traditionally told story. It's just like, oh no, there's just, you're just gonna look around and figure it out yourself and read an item description if you want. Sometimes, I prefer being presented with a hammer, you know what I mean? Oh, shit. So I want to see if I can actually dodge to avoid damage. Because, I mean, th there is the literal get out of the way of the attack. But I, I don't know if there's iframes on the dodge. Oh, sh there's a guy? There's another guy? Oh, shit. I'm definitely going to die here. Okay. <laughs> Aegis is broken! It's been completely repaired at the last Vestal she visited. Everything she has is gone. That's sad. These guys are like so much easier than Boss 1. Now, what was over this way? Is this just an alternate route? Oh my god, that charge attack is so good. Alright. Are these just some little areas in the side that I just haven't explored yet? Looks like it. Well, can't drink water here. Speedruns for this are gonna be so funny looking, man. People are just gonna be going dash, 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 dash. Yeah, 
I want to do some more jump R2s, man. Dude, you just hang in the air. It's so Devil May Cry, man. I'm gonna die, aren't I? Alright, drink the oil. Oh, yeah. Oh. I jumped and I had no more stamina. Come to me. Alright. That impact is why I love hammers. No, unemployed shock. Like, I... I'm done with swords. I'm done. It's over. I'm like hammers only. That's it. That's all I'll ever be, man. Can I go up here? I'm actually curious. If I go to my map... Oh, dude. Oh, I'm so loud. I know the first thing I'm gonna do is just upgrade my hammer. <laughs> not gonna get more strength. Or power, or whatever this game calls it. I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna go for the hammer. You know, I, I actually think that this is correct. Okay, so like, if you have a game where you have jumping. Many of you may recall the game Stray that I played. Where you're a cat and you can't jump. You don't have a button that you can press to just do this. When you, a player does have the ability to just press the button and they can just instantly jump, it feels really, really good. It's just a satisfying way to move around. Like this little obstacle to be able to just shoot, like time the jump, super low stakes. Right? Oh, I see. I am going to. Oh, running takes stamina? Get out of here. It doesn't take stamina in real life. Is this just like a big loop? Because I don't think I've actually been this way. Alright, anyways. In the game Stray. They had this problem where they had a really intricate environment like this one. And by giving players the ability to jump, they would spend tons of time trying to jump and reach various places. When most of the time in Stray, you just literally had to like go this way. All right, so I can let go early if I want. And so what they did is they removed jump and made it so that if you looked at a location, a little sign would appear and you'd click to automatically let the player jump to that location. There was no aiming, there was no timing, you would just see the reticle tell you where you were going to land and you'd go there. You see, if I, if I do the light swing, I can't stagger. I also should use the block way more, because this is actually really sturdy. And I bring that up because I think that when you give a player movement like this, you just have this problem of how do you make sure a player doesn't spend all their time trying to jump around? And when I was jumping around back there, you may have heard me say, yeah, I think this is correct. Oh, I know where this links to. Yeah. I think it's actually correct to just let the player run into invisible walls in really obvious ways. Otherwise, I'm going to spend all my time trying to, like, hop up these bushes. I also want to see something with this endurance bar. 
So see how it's white, and if I hit this... Oh, I see. But if I did another movement in there, it would over overheat. Okay, got it. Yeah, because right here, I just thought, can I get up onto that bridge? And, like, you feel a really obvious wall right here. It, and, and I think that, like, you have to strike that sort of balance in a 3D environment. If you have jumping, which feels good, and you have a sort of rich, textured environment like this. When I mean rich and textured, I mean not like Mario Galaxy levels, where it's super clearly like a rectangular prism that you're sitting on. <laughs> I can't believe I missed this before. You actually want the environment to look somewhat realistic. I think you have to have some sort of really strong answer to make sure players don't go jumping crazy. You've just obtained a new module. You can assign it to a module slot at the same level from the module menu. Grade 1 efficiency ventilation. It slightly reduces the internal damage caused by rapid cooling. Slightly increases health. Well... Well, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> yeah, again, there's just like an obvious invisible wall here. And I think I think you just have to do that. I think that's just correct if you want to be able to have interesting looking environments and give someone jump. You almost have to be over the top with how severe the invisible walls are. Oh shit, those aren't my souls? Oh shit. Close! Close! Oh, there they are. Dude, I don't want to be a blocking boy. Oh, dude, I am so bad. All right. All right. I am going to beat this boss. If it's the last thing I do. All right. All right. All right, all right, all right. Now, I can probably shortcut some of this. You have three points, baby. Storyteller, I love that you win your points. And then just immediately spend the points. Dude, the range on this is way more than I thought. Now, Vance, how's the game feel? Are we honing in on patterns or frustrated with controls at this point? The controls feel very, very familiar. Like, super, super familiar. The... One of the things that's helpful here, it actually makes me think of early point-click adventure games compared to more modern point-click adventure games. Sorry, I need to click my windows around really fast. Wild races, are they floaty or fairly tight? So first, just on the controls like this... This dash feels, like, instantly responsive, and the jump feels incredibly responsive, but the hammer has a wind-up to it. So, I mean, like, let me try to hit it really quickly. Like, you can see the character instantly goes into the animation. So, I mean, th there's a wind-up to it, but, it, I mean, especially this dash feels really crisp. And I think that I, I need to get used to the feel of all the things. But what I was saying earlier is, like, 
Oh yeah, because first of all, this, you can dash quite quickly afterwards. The wind-up is the big one. And I'm overheated. But in early graphic adventure games, the way those early adventure games worked is that you, the player, were trying to solve a series of puzzles spread across different screens. And there'd come a point where you would have 20 inventory items. There'd be 30 screens you could have access to. And as a result, you'd just be wandering around trying to use items in places and there was just like, you know, 20 times 50 different combinations of things and it was just so hard to figure out what to do. And what a lot of modern adventure games did, uh, such as Shardlight that we're playing on air right now, you're, 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 if there is a complex puzzle, you're stuck on one screen. If there is a really simple puzzle, you are allowed to move around five or six screens. So, in other words, the game constrains things to help you just understand what problem you're trying to solve. This game has nothing else to do but run to this location. There's also, in this menu, there's just not a lot of different weapons that we have even seen. We've seen four weapons, and they were the four starting weapons, and we have one of the weapons. And in my brain, I'm like, okay, well, I guess I have everything that I need. What have I not used? Hey, this petrification grenade. Yeah, let me try that. Like, it's really letting me know. It's really letting me know that I should probably be exploring... I see. It's really letting me know very clearly what my tools are that I should be experimenting with. I should use the weak attack. I'm not timing this properly. Ooh, it's, it's that attack where he swipes back. There's only like a few moves. Yeah, the instant I swung, I was like, ugh. My stamina! Okay, 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 okay. Alright, I have enough time. The, the block feels very different. Oh, fuck. Block feels like really weird compared to. Well, weird's the wrong word. It feels like stronger on some axes and weaker in others. Because it seems to cause this fella to. Fuck. I'm stuck. Not literally stuck in the game, but I'm in the corner there, huh? Oh shit. One more, maybe? Oh, thank God. Oh. Yeah, because, like, like the, the, the shield, you become completely immobile. Like, I can't move around at all. It uses endurance. 
So it's spending some of those familiar. Oh, did did the haters lose their points? Yes. Oh, oh, so sweet. Oh, I love when the haters never vote against Day Nine on his own stream. Oh, you fool. But, but um, the game feels very fast and mobile with a lot of the combat. And, like, the dashing especially is quick. Um, so I kind of feel like the shield is not like a normal move. It's on the special move button. And that's that's making me think about it in a different way than I'm, than I'm used to. But I think, you know, it's kind of like how Bloodborne didn't have shield because the game was so fast and snappy. Module keys. You've obtained a module key. Aegis has several slots for modules. Augment our stats. And alter the behavior of certain mechanics. The slots have levels that allow Aegis to fit increasingly powerful modules. You can equip modules at any time from the module menu. Okay. Alright, so here is the Vestal. I don't think blocking is ubiquitous for all weapons. It is not. That is true. So let's go to upgrades. Weapons. Oh, I don't have ingots. Yeah. Cool. I'll do this. Can I go up again? I think I'd love to. See, I'm really curious about this impact stat that this improves, because I think impact means that increases the chance of stagger. Oh, module slots. Requires one key to unlock. Oh, I see. So if I have a level N slot, I can do any module in there that is N or less. And then I can upgrade these slots to equip stronger modules. Very nice. Oh, this turd. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna use my R2 till my... I'm gonna use my big swings until my smaller swings can actually stagger. I don't know if it's the damage amount that staggers. Nice. Erpin. And the ridiculous is yay day nine. Yay, me! Charleville shield musket? You've acquired a new weapon? They both have shields? When the sh reflectable shields are broken? The scrolls unfurl to form an exceedingly strong shield. Alright, so... Alright. Alchemical hand cannon and alchemical afflictions. You've acquired a hand cannon. Congratulations. Just like our enemy's weapons, Aegis' own weapons can cause alchemical damage. Alright, so this is elemental damage or whatever. Flame Frost and Fulmination, aka Lightningness. When she uses alchemical capsules for each such attack, alchemical damage fills a gauge. Oh, alchemical capsules are the ammo that I've been picking up from these nerds. Uh, when full triggers an affliction, which lasts until the gauge is depleted. Flame Affliction ignites de continuous damage. Also, can freeze its target. It can thaw faster by attacking. Fulmination electrocutes its target, causing additional damage. It can stop electrocution by using an insulation elixir. Oh, that's interesting. Dude, okay, so... Um, sync needs tightening. Thanks, Ghost Stalker. Thank you. The only person who knows how to keep me in check is Ghost Stalker. Okay, so... I was talking about my interest in the setting. The fact that it is the French Revolution plus... Mechanical Automata. I really like when a game goes hard 
on the in-world, in-lore, in-narrative mechanics on top of something familiar, right? If, if you have played action RPGs of almost any form, 70% of any action RPG is understood. You're going to do combat, you're going to level up, you're going to have bosses, you're going to have enemies, you're going to get better equipment, you're going to upgrade them, you know, all these kinds of things. But then when it's wrapped in this narrative, it's really fun, the fact that I overheat, and if I try to cool myself, I take frost damage, because I'm applying coolant to myself, which can also do damage. The fact that electrocution is severe in this game, because I'm an automata, oh my goodness. It's a nice way to make the familiar feel different. Oop, gotta click back into the screen. All right. So if I... Huh. Sick. So if I... Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. All right. Is 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 there a understand is can I get more information again about this? Thank you, Ghosty. Sorry everyone. Uh technical issues are continuing. Oh my god. Let me know if that fixes it. Oh my god. The running speed is an issue. I, I'm I'm on walk. If you run, this is what you look like. Didn't do it. Ghosty, I am changing it every time. You know what? I'm going to set it to what I think is the right setting, and I'm going to just ignore everything from then on out. <laughs> uh my k Lotha. or my k legacy of the void says oh thank god yeah yeah i always take my time the running animate the the basic movement animation is a little off sync that's fine well i can just do this and pull out my <laughs> Yeah, this is, like, really interesting. And not what I would have expected out of the combat. Th this now feels like a very different combat system what I was expecting. Musket in buy corn. Musket in coat. Locked. All right. Well, who doesn't love equipping some buy corns? Oh, yeah. Dude, look at this! Gives me bonus fulmination resistance, I assume is what that is. So I'm curious about what some of the weight qualities mean. This, this has less flame resistance, more fulmination resistance, and more endurance. I don't know if there's any sort of um, load consideration. Alden says, I read Bicorn is Bitcoin. So when, when this guy is frozen, no alchemical capsule. Oh, I see. So uh, if you look in the bottom left, there's these five bullets. One, two, three, four, five. So I can't infinitely shoot. I almost have gun endurance. Monster says, is the game good so far? Thinking of buying. I'm enjoying it. I've played for an hour. And I mean, one of the qualities about these games that I like 
uh, like th this kind of very slow movement plotting RPG, is that it really stretches the time. Because you actually have to pay attention very... Ah, fuck. You have to pay attention quite a bit. Oh, I'm overheating. Fuck. enjoying myself. And, but in particular, the thing that I'm interested in this Bonsonator is the setting. The setting is very unusual. I mean, I, I, it's more than unusual. Are there any other French Revolution automaton games? And also Bonsonator, the combat is quite different from the other uh, FromSoft games that I've played. Like, the fact that you can do this, have a weapon like this, and then need to switch to the second loadout, is, is, is very unusual to me. <laughs> Jess says, I'm certain I've played French Revolution automaton stuff in hidden object games. It's true! Nemesis Claws. Finding one's what? You have acquired a compass. Sign the compass to the quick access belt so you can use it any time. It's your way to the destination. Alright, so... Is it here? Now, how does this work? The riverbank is just beyond this wood. I also got Nemesis Claws, you say? Oops. Nemesis Claws. Weight medium. Impact is down. It's an agility weapon. Oh. Okay, let's give this a shot. Anansi boy says, hello, handsome. <laughs> I sometimes do answer to handsome. Hello to you. How do I get up here? Is it a puzzle? And perhaps I a dumbass? Do I strike that rope? It's literally a rope. <laughs> okay, that's not it. Wait, there's something over there that I missed? Oh, how embarrassing. Compagnon, in the name of the nation, our honor demands that we stop our work. All right, I'm gonna close this. Mood for lore? Read a book. I think I just can't get up here right now. All right. I've discovered something that's very one way, more so than I expected. Activate the best stool. You gonna make me sit down for it? Sure, I'll do it. So can I upgrade my bullet? I need a Lavoisier catalyst. Yeah, Bonsonator, I think that, um, Things that stand out in this game as being different from other genres. 
or excuse me, different from other games within this kind of genre of this more plotting, deliberate combat challenge action RPG style thing. One is um, obviously the setting. Another is how the combat flows and feels. It's a lot more... It feels almost Devil May Cry-like. You're on fire. Hit buttons to get off fire. Yeah, the ammo thing is really interesting, the way that you need to both reload the five shots and you have a total amount of ammo. So it, it feels a lot more like stamina and a lot less like reloading a clip. Try to fiddle with this one a little bit more. Yeah, it feels almost Devil May Cry like at times, especially with like the the stay in the air kind of thing. Oh, I gotta do that to somebody. Holy shit, that guy comes at you. What? What's the special move here? I assume that's parry, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't understand why my mouth produced that. I don't understand. I can't, I can't justify that to you, to anyone. I'm gonna try to see if there's iframes on this. Yeah, see, I was gonna like that guy comes at you fast, but instead I just I got half the sentence out and then I had to fight. And then I'd realized what I'd done, and at that time it was already too late. Nice hat. Thank you. It's a Bitcoin hat. Yeah, what if I charge this? Oh. So what do you think that diamond filling up means? Is this a stagger? Don't worry, the internet's famous for its short memory. The internet, simultaneously, has the shortest memory of all time. Excellent, proving your oil barrettes. Nice, 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 nice. The internet simultaneously has the shortest memory of all time. You can be a complete clown and a week later, everyone's like, all right, well, you know, it's, it's, I guess that's that. Oh, it's actually blocked. Oh, this is a different... Alright, I see. Alright, I need to finish this. Internet simultaneously never forgets and forgets fucking immediately, right? It's just like the longest or it's gone. Second one that I wanted to say is, I was talking to Bonsonator about, like, the combat feels very different, feels very Devil May Cry-like. Second one is the setting, and the third one that I want to talk about that feels quite different is uh, how a lot of the stat and leveling and upgrading works feels a lot more... Well, gosh, it's interesting, like, because I think one of the hallmarks of a game that has challenging combat like this, where it's not really that the combat is that impossibly difficult. Like, all I'm doing is swinging, waiting for a window, dodging, charging some stuff up. Yeah. But as exemplified by the fact that I had to stop talking. Like, dude, I, it, you actually have to focus. Oh shit, your decisions actually matter. The timing actually matters. And when that happens, it makes all the other systems in the game richer. So, What's interesting to me is like, okay, so I have these passive modules. I have a very simplified equipment 
setup. I have some simplified stats where there's six stats and there's just not that many secondary stats that emerge from it. And so these systems remind me a lot more of kind of like a traditional AAA single player game. But the fact that it is in an environment where the combat actually tests you and punishes you and wants to make sure you're doing a good job and all that, for me, that makes it feel a, a good bit like um, it's going to feel a lot more inter Well, it just has to. It has to be more interesting. Then when you, like, swap out your passive skills in a game like The Last of Us, where at the end of the day, you're just going to be throwing bricks at people. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. All right, so let's let's fiddle with this. We've got Falchion and Saber. All right, let's, let's try this one. Oh, this is... What? Oops. I gotta start doing some of these, some of these moves, dude. Dude, the, yeah, like the 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 move sets in this game is fucking zany. You need a tool to break this. Literally, I'm an automaton. My whole body is a tool, man. Come on. It's so strange to break barrels and to find shit. In them. Because, I, like, I, I started this game off with a hammer. So I, I actually think that I did not understand for the first 30, 45 minutes that I played that there were going to be so many different weapons that function like this. So where am I on the map? Map of Paris. Oh, okay. So I'm over here. Like, look at how much distance I can cover and then just dart back. <laughs> Alright, have a seat. Have a seat, little darling. Right on the phone. My cats love treating my phone like it's a... Like a, like a little egg in their little mother hands. What up, Fido? Module P. Nice. Where is this? Dude, I'm just exploring. Like, I know I'm supposed to not go this way. Oh, this is where I came from. Great. All right, so I've, I've, I've gone in a big old circle. Now, I don't really want to go this way all the way back. The nerd was. Because if I, if I touch that, it'll probably just open up. I assume that I'm going to need to go up this way. Use my running. No. Hi. All right, sit down. Come on. Come on, sweetheart. Come on, this is a big stretch. You need to lie down. Just lie down. There you go. Right on the phone. It's got a nice warm battery. I see. It's one way. Uh, oh, cutscenes. Here we go. Or boss fights. One of the two. This boat will take me to Paris. Come on in. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to say that next time we go to vacation, man. This airplane will take me to Paris. Oh shit, oh fuck, oh shit. 
Unstable lightning ram. I assume it's gonna ram. Of course, it's frozen. I think I misunderstood how frost works. So, I'm gonna pull out this. So then I hit this button, and then I can do this. Alright, we have a combo. I don't know if I'm even gonna let it do its thing. I'm just gonna keep freezing it and then shocking it. Yeah, the combat is... Way faster than I understood at first. Oh, I'm out of bullets. Oh, shit. Oh, there's a different move if I'm running. So low on health. Whoa, what was that? Oh, did I parry him? No, I didn't. Oh, shit. Fuck me, man. <laughs> uh, boss seems hard counter by range. Well, here's the problem. I just burned all of my ammo on that guy. Give me the barrette. Is this, this doesn't do anything right now. No parry for you. This is such an interesting mechanism where when your when your stamina runs out, you can just hit the button and keep fighting. Like look at this. I can use my ult here and then I can just keep hitting them. Then I'm going to overheat and then instantly I hit that. And I want to see this. If I keep doing this, if I keep spamming this, I'm overheating, hit this again. Oh, that's actually pretty sweet. Alright. This is actually just not a long walk. Oh shit, I'm on fire. All right, all right. I, I like these weapons better than the than the hammer. So, wh what is the ability for this? What is? Hey, look! There's our guy. It's our guy. Oh, no, I dodged it. That's, that's false.
I don't know what that slowdown is. Yeah, no, th th this game actually has way faster combat than I realized at first. Because, like, right now, with this... Oh, shit. With this setup, I don't have a block. I only have dodge. Yeah, so there are iframes on this. Oh, I rolled into it. <laughs> for that to go down. So I can't roll and then I can... Oh, that's actually such a good mechanic. Dude. Oh, shit. Dude, like, you can just instantly use coolant. See here? I'm out. Use the coolant. Oh, dude, that's... Mm. Is there pairing in this game? It's attached to certain uh, weapons. So here... So here, that's my special ability, is that sort of blade spin move. So while I'm doing it, I use... Oh, fuck. Cool. Get me fucking out of here. Coolin'. All right. We're here again. At the end of my rope. Gun to finish. Oh, I have five bullets. I guess that's right. I can use that. Grade two stable charging module and a module key. Interesting. Yeah, one of the things that I feel like happens a lot. Travel to Paris. One of the things that I feel like happens a lot in every RPG I ever play is that you wind up with so much garbage. You just, you, you find an item and you're like, oh, another arterial leaf. <laughs> you're just like, oh, okay. And um, on the flip side, a lot of like modern ultra streamlined games, you can never pick up anything unless it's useful. But I feel like a lot of the AAA games that are like linear story driven ones, they're, they're very flat. Like, again, if you find a bullet in The Last of Us, you now get another bullet. And it's not about the resource this management or the gameplay. Take me to Paris. I know. It's not about the gunplay in The Last of Us, or excuse me, the, the, the management of the those bullets in The Last of Us as much as it is about the story, about going through the sequence, about that sort of experience. And so I actually quite like the fact that this has a balance of, like, streamlinedness, but then I'm also going around looking for module keys. And then if I want to upgrade some of these equipment, I need special items for this. And then I also want to collect ammunition to be able to constantly recharge my weapons. I really want to skip this cutscene. But for you, I'm going to wash it. I'm a robot, huh? Les Invalides. Les Invalides. Don't you do a liaison between the S and the I there? I don't know. My French is trash. I have garbage French. Très oui. Beaucoup de oui. Oh, I thought that was concept art. I'm in the game. <laughs> Caillou? 
is water death. Okay. All right. All right. Argus is broken. All right. Uh. Oh, game. You couldn't have put it any closer to the water, could you? Thank you. I dare say the answer is yes. Map of Paris. Hey, look, full health. I know. And I got three oil things. Man, I am living it up. Yeah, this character has an absolutely alarmingly still idle movement animation. This is maybe the most realistic idle animation I've ever seen. Oh my god, did someone actually think about idle animations? Most idle animations. Can you imagine if I was waiting in line for my coffee? And I'm like, doing this? I'm supposed to be idle, you know what I do most of the time? I just stand there, I don't even fuck with my phone. I just like, look around and then sometimes I have an itch. Yeah, just looking at her arm. Okay, so that's how I wait in line and coffee, oh yeah. <laughs> huh. Immobilization. Ah, Aegis's, or Aegis's light weapons are able to inflict immobilization. As shown on the gauge fail, it is temporarily immobilized, leaving them open to a critical hit. Ah. Essence of a lesser spirit. So this is going to be a relink point. Oh my god. Ouch! Is that a dogmaton? It's a dogmaton. Alright, going in. Alright, upgrades. Dude, I mean... Should, should I? I don't know, man. I wish, I wish there was a way to hover over and learn what impact and immobilization mean. I think I think it might be time to ditch the hammer. I like this falchion and saber. Oh, I have enough resources. All right, I, I'm a dumbass. Let me go. Let me go. How many module keys? All right, I'm gonna wait till I have uh, another key. Wait, upgrades. Um, agility. Yeah, let's do this. Oh, immobilization is the is the meter that it fills up. Ah. What's engineering do? It's just armor. Oh, and then affliction multiplier, I think is a boost to the amount of my alchemical effects. Got to got to got to got to got to. Okay. Confirm. 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 And I'm going to wait till we have three of those so I can get another. I might have to use a restroom in a second here, too. I think I may as well use it now. I'll just take, like, a quick dip. Suicide Squid says, hmm, just joined. How are you finding this, Sean? Should I go back and watch the VOD from the beginning? Um, I, I actually think you should watch right now because I think that I misunderstood what the game was like when it first started. This game actually has much more crisp and dynamic combat than I expected. 
Because a lot of times, uh, the, the best way to show this is if I go to my equipment and I get this and I go to my body of work. So here's the weapon that I started the game with. So here... Right? I have this... Doesn't this look soulsy? You know? And oh, I have this... There's my charged attack. Here's my regular heavy attack. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. But then when you get the other weapons... I mean, look at how quickly I can move around and dash. And there's no block. And I have an active refresh of my endurance meter. Look how quickly I dash. I don't, I don't even have a block with this moveset. You can do air combos. So I was like, huh. It, and and so I, I've been saying that it feels almost a little bit like Devil May Cry combat plus Dark Souls combat. Meaning that you have the dynamism and the speed, but your decisions actually fucking matter. Because <laughs> when I was playing Devil May Cry as a kid, I was like, oh, 126 hit combo is fucking sick, right? And then you have, like, special moves like, oh. There's a lot more button pressing. I'm frozen. So I can use my special here. My god. It was a pair of ferocious dogmatons. See, I like heavy weapons for the ability to knock. Oh, you wouldn't dare dodge me. I love staggers. Oops. Alright, I accidentally ran out of my stuff. Like, that's sweet. That's real dynamic semi-ninja mode action. That's where I just came from. It occurred to me I could just jump like that there, huh? You also have a jump and you can, like, you know, grab onto ledges and stuff. Slow iframe times are cool. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna require a wee bit getting used to. Locked. So I assume this is either, like, can't be opened from this side. They look like relink points. the same person. Alright. Alright, I am getting absolutely out. Dude, this guy just, like, does not stagger. God, no, no, not that, not that. Anything but the phone. Shut up. Oh, 
Okay. I'd like to remind all of you that we're doing What the Deck on September 26th. It's going to be me versus Brian Kibler in a battle of double versus nothing. If you go to our deck list submissions channel on our Discord, you can submit a deck there. All the extra rules are included, the format, that sort of thing. But in particular, give us decks that are focused around the word double, like double team, double strike, duplication, things like that. Or decks that are not about doing nothing. Have the word no, like no permanence, colorless, or cannot, things like that. Sucks to suck. I really gotta replace my gaming rig. This gaming rig that I'm playing on is six years old. And uh, one of my <laughs> one of my fans went bust though. So I'm having some technical issues lately, so, you know, I, I'm turning down the graphics on everything I'm playing. Dude, that feels so good, and then I overheat, and then I use the coolant to immediately refresh. I mean, this is the coolest mechanic. Uh, for any of you that don't know what the hell I'm talking about, let me get my mouse in here. Um, actually, I, I guess I'll just point. So you see over there, this green bar? That is that is my endurance. It functions very much so like a traditional stamina meter. And when it runs out, I overheat. And you'll see it flash red and I can't do anything. So let me just do some dashes. So you see how as I'm spamming it, it turns red? Can't dash anymore. But... You'll see it start to just go... You'll see it start to decrease. I can hit Y during that period of time and use coolant on myself and immediately refresh it. So, so see that? And now we get that. And oh, it's coolant. And you see how there's that, that blue thing, that's that blue circle? When it fills all the way up, I get frozen and I'm immobilized. And then I can spam buttons to break that off, but it's like a really nice fun, engaging lean forward way to stay in the combat. And this is what I mean to... Who was it asking? Who was asking it earlier? It was. Server-side Squid was asking what, what, you know, should I watch this game from the start? I actually didn't quite understand this. That this game is really like This is like dash in, dash, dash, dash. Use coolant. See, it's not about like this kind of slow go in, go out sort of a, a, a mechanism that you'd feel in like an Elden Ring or a Soul style game. You can just stay engaged. Shit, I'm dead. Dude, I'm like so low on everything. Holy shit. I'm gonna try to bait him into his... Oh my god. Guy outspun me so hard. So let's see here. This is where I came from. Was this the way that I was? I will only be able to locate Monsieur de Vaucanson's workshop from an elevated position. Oh shit, I didn't hit my cooling button fast enough.
Alright. Then various this feels like a very tactical reloading mechanic. Yeah. And again, to be mega clear, I, I did not understand that at all. Twisted Hammer says, I find it so incredible that you and I enjoy games for such vastly different reasons, and yet, in spite of that, we seem to have taste in games that's nearly identical. Yeah, I mean, one of the things, dude, okay, I, I, look, I need to use a restroom. I needed to use a restroom a minute ago. Give me, give me, give me like two minutes. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Carefully parking my booty right by the respawn point. Okay, so up there, it looks like there's a relink. Here is the direction I came from, over here. And this that connects back around the other side is where we find our first dogmatons. And Barry says, I love watching people like Dana recommend content because he does a good job delineating what is this from what are my opinions of it. So I can usually tell whether I like something even independently of Sean's opinion of it. Oh my god, that feels so good to have you say, because I try really hard to do that. Specifically. Holy, dude, I got like a perfect reload. Yeah, because I think, like, frankly, I enjoy a pretty gigantic range of games. Oh, that's just a shader. I, I enjoy a pretty wide range of games. And I, I think the thing that I've learned over the years is that each game, you have to learn what it is you're supposed to be finding fun in it. So, like, you know, the the classic example is some people like stories, some people like gameplay. So if you have a game that has a lot of gameplay and a lot of story, you might have someone like me skipping a lot of the story. Because often I'm just not that intrigued by stories of games. I like premises, I like mechanics. Oh, what's over here? I like exploration. I get in here? Ah, yes. The classic ARPG. Now, there is a door here. Make no mistake, there's a door. But your character doesn't even know how to open that. Mm-hmm. Alright, so that that's where I went before. I'm gonna go this way first and just take a peek at what's around this side. Oh, it's facing me. Yeah, there's a lot of different reasons why people enjoy games. Shit. Jesus, reload. Like, I enjoy these types of intense combat encounters. Oh! I love it so much. Oh! I see, so there's a safe spot. Oh, shit. And I feel like every game is trying to get you to think in a very particular way when you're playing it. This, this combat sequence is really button pressing heavy and like really probably a lot easier than I feel like it is, but I'm trying to use all the mechanics and stuff and it's really interesting. Um, God, what are some examples? I mean, this is the mental model stuff that I'm always ranting about. This is why when the original Dark Souls came out, you had some people say this is the greatest game that's ever been made. And then other people go... This game is terrible. We don't have a drop of water, 
Oh, a bronze ingot? I can upgrade stuff now? Hell yeah. Let me listen to this person's problem, and then I'll talk about that stuff. Water, see what play. Here is something to quench your thirst. Praise be to God. Bless Praise be to me. Whoever you are, take this for your trouble. Wait a minute. You mean it's not an obtuse quest that requires me to open up a wiki to quest through? Someone's just like, help me. Okay, here you go. So let's see, this opened up into here. So I still haven't gone that way, but I've opened up this door, which will give me a shortcut path here. But yeah, dude, <laughs> if we just give her some oil, please give us water. And I just hand her a bin of oil and I'm like, finger guns, got you, sweetheart. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 I feel like every game has this, you need to understand how the game wants you to play it. Um, I was joking about this when we were playing Total War Warhammer 3. That you're really, like, I recommend in most of those fights, just enjoy watching a huge battle happen. Which is very different from Into the Breach, which is you have to solve a puzzle every single round. There's not a puzzle in Total War Warhammer 3 in almost all of those early fights. You're just overrunning shit. And so whenever I sit down to play a game, when I was younger, I would just play it and be like, I don't know, it seems weird. I don't think I'm going to do it. I think the most brutal example that I've been made fun of for years about is, any of y'all see me play 2016's Doom? Doom is a game where you're supposed to never stop moving. Anytime you hear a guitar, you need to run faster. Okay, that's Doom. And I played, because the shooter I'd played the most at that point in my life was Counter-Strike. So I was just like sitting in a corner. Like, Boo! I mean, it took me so long. And I was just like, huh, this game's like, graphics are really great. It runs like really well. Wow. Remember, there was someone that's just like, what on earth is the matter with you, Sean? And I was like, what? I'm doing it fine. I'm playing a game. And that game was actually pretty good about trying to bludgeon you. Dude, run up to people. Start running. Run. Go. Go. Run up. Fight. The only way to get more ammo is to get into melee range of people and do the special crit kill. And I feel like one of the reasons why Doom was successful is because it took really special care to vigorously grab your shoulder and shake you and go, Dude! Run! Go! Come on! Right, so here's the ridge. Right around here. And so th th this game, too, kind of quickly puts you in a situation where you understand that you need to spend stamina. Because this, this weapon doesn't have a block. When I hit my block button, this happens. And then I need to run away, and then I'm in trouble, and then I hit Y, and oh my god, I'm allowed to save myself again. Like, literally within an hour, I feel like the game trained me. And probably would have done so sooner had I not had the, the hammer. See, I, and I love, I love hammer-type charges like this. Like, I think that's fun as hell. But I mean, th this weapon seems way more dynamic. Dude, I'm just gonna stun him. What? Oh, I see how the fuckers work. Okay.
See, I love being able to use this move. Look, I'm gonna wait for him to do a swing. I'm gonna run up and hit my L, which overheats me. But then I'm able to use coolant and just instantly get it back. Feel, feels great. Oh, he has a second attack he can do there? That fucker. He has a second dong that he does. Nice. Twisted Hammer says, I may be kind of cheating Doom 2016 to remove all the demons and just take my time enjoying the level design. I mean, that's, that's again, that's another thing. And Bronstein says, just tuning in, is this your buddy's game? Uh, my buddy's game release is tomorrow. Broken pieces. <laughs> Completely different game to this one. He's got a second thong. Yeah, because he's a thong, he does that, you know what I mean? Let's see, I'm gonna use my petrification grenade. Oh yeah, B-Town Pro, the, the movement in this game is much, 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 much faster. I mean, from like a combat perspective. Cause I can like hit, hit, dash, dash. Like look how quickly my dashes go. You can see the bar chunking down every time I press B, and it's really responsive, too. Come on, refresh. Oh, my God. I'm trying to think of games. What are good examples of games that if you don't know how to play them properly, you won't have fun? And when you know how to play them properly, you're like, oh, my God, never mind. Uh, any any y'all ever heard of Age Vampires 2 and StarCraft 2? Yeah, I actually, that's like a really, really good example. Ever stream Dishonored? Pi, I have, but I, I feel like I want to revisit the Dishonored games. Dishonored 2, when I got it, um, there was a lot of technical issues that... I didn't have a two-PC setup at that time, and there was a bunch of technical bugs on release. And I played it on the hardest difficulty mode, because most games... Oops, I'm out of stamina. I'm not paying attention. Ow, fucking god, this guy. No, you're supposed to get stunned. Is it my light attacks that do this? Oh, come on! I thought I was gonna stun him. Alright. Alright. Yeah, Dishonored 2 was really janky on release. I think my shit's right up there. So let's see. I should be able to go here and go to the right for a shortcut. I mean, I'm still kind of getting the hang of the combat system. Dogs are also way easier in this game than any other doggone game that I've played. Might cheese this a little bit. What a bad dog. Or that turd. This is where I died. My stuff should be like right in there. Oh my god. Yeah, these are no from dogs. God, it feels good to self-refresh. So nice. Oh my god. I have like all my health bullets. I think it's also a really interesting choice to have this game. Oh, does he get staggered at the end of that? One. Oh, all right, I tried to dodge roll through. All right, we're getting owned again. Ah, 
Oh, I was recharging. Fuck. Oh, that active reload is just an incredible feeling. I mean, it's just, I mean, it just feels incredible. But yeah, no, I mean, I feel like the StarCraft, or like your traditional classic late 90s RTS that still has a community today problem, is that there is a way that you have to play it. Sack tap. I feel like this game takes a lot of influences from Devil May Cry with the way the combat works and this sort of thing where you can like move and like look how quickly you you can dash around look at my green endurance and then you have this active reload on your stamina it's really interesting the combat feels so snappy and fast the animations have a little stiffness to it because every character in this game is an automaton So they have that sort of like jittery, stuttery movement, but I mean, things respond really, really well. Not including me. did it. If you play this, I would recommend not doing the hammer at first. I would recommend not the hammer. So I think I was semi-misled when I played with the hammer. They do damage to each other? I believe they do. Fire chain. What's a fire chain? A Chthonian Inferno that engulfs a weapon and enables fire attacks? Wait. Wait, 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 wait. All right, let me... All right. Oh, oh, dude. Oh, dude, and look, look in the bottom left. There's a timer that's just circling around. Oh, dude. Okay, yeah, no, this, this. It's so interesting because I'm kind of... Oh, my God, this feels very like... Um... It's just very gamey. I'm trying to find the right word for it. Where, like, there's a lot of gauges and combos and numbers and things that you can manage. Oh, shit. All right. I I'm going to get my Charleville 1789 shield musket, and I'm going to use the falchion and saber. Like, th there's that very stat y kind of game. Where it's like, all right, you have a blade that just goes funk. Has the game told us what the blue circles at the bottom left mean? Yeah. So let me get out my gun. So see how it says 37 and it has five? I have 37 total ammunition. And uh, there are five currently in the chamber. So see how I'm out? Can't shoot. Can't shoot. And then it slowly refreshes them one at a time. But ammo, ammo's not free, so you have to go around killing nerds. So 
So see how when I get this, it says two alchemical capsules. And so in the bottom left, it says 31. It used to say 29. Where I came out of. Thanks for doing it and apologies for wasting the ammunition. Nah, hell no. Nah. Like, this is. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of. Um... Oh my god, Curse of the Dead Gods. Sorry, my brain's like a little melted. We have been we have been just doing so much generic prep for this trip on Friday. <laughs> Packing things away for Cece and for us and going through checklists and my brain's just like totally fried. Um Reminds me of Curse of the Dead Gods, where there was those stamina pips. It would build underneath you, kind of slow combat down a little bit. Okay, so let's see. Grokayu. Dude, there's a lot of risk reward feel in this. Feels good to get better. Oh, dude, yeah, no. I, I oh man. Oh man, dude, the 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 Cause I remember even saying to people who were getting into Elden Ring, like, do you have any tips? And I was like, yeah, in the combat, do nothing. Often, doing nothing, just walking around, doing nothing, waiting for your stamina to rebuild is a really important thing to do. And that's actually unbelievably counterintuitive. You know, you'd see someone go up to a boss and they would just be hitting the buttons and going as fast as they could and hitting and hitting and hitting and then they would like run out of stamina and then they'd have to wait for a long time to refill just like this. So the fact that this game has this like, you no, know, keep keep pushing buttons, keep pressing the advantage. I feel like is not only just feels good, but like I think is more intuitive for uh, the average bear too. Longevity module is health. Critical repair is... Slightly reduces the internal damage. Yeah. I actually think I'm not going to do this. This is stable charging. Increases balance. <laughs> what do you think balance means? <laughs> Bronstein says, I know you've been enjoying magic lately. I made a shrines list with Joda and Radadrabic, and it's hilarious. I can get as many shrines down as I want, because every shrine that dies comes back as a non-legendary. Oh, dude. A lot of my games are in just really good places lately. And I'm having a lot of fun playing games. S off late. Alright, so I've kind of cleared out this area. The only place I haven't really gone is up and around the corner there, because this just doesn't have anything. Can I go in? Okay. 
Okay. So here's the area where we haven't gone, and I'm gonna assume that this relinks back to the original entrance. It's a nice set piece. now in tune with the music. I, I, I have no shame. I'm going to shoot this guy from afar. I don't want to die. Oh, you fucking shot me! Guns charge, good question. What the fuck was that? Fucking hell. I'm gonna go up and hit that man. Fuck, he pulled it out again. Shit. Fuck. Thought I timed it right. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I want to see this. What does this do when I charge it? So if I do this, it's... Oh my god. Yeah, you know, the... Ugh. Ugh. Just in terms of the overall controls and flow of battles, I think this does this a lot better than... Um, Oh my god, I've played this game so many times on it. Uh, uh, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Like, those games had a really sort of action-y, combat-y, fun, you know, use some magic, use some abilities, do some combat, do some dodging, do some positioning, manage some gauges, manage some mana. And this manages to do this in, like, such a simpler way with, like, fewer buttons. The fact that you have stamina different attacks and charges on one weapon and you can switch to another weapon and you can actively refresh and each weapon has a different special move oh oh my god it's just really nice what a surprise i would not have ever thought this game would wind up or even this style of game would wind up with this kind of cute combat system Maybe cute's the wrong word. Juicy? Juicy's maybe the better term? I gotta adjust these windows. CPU heat. You okay? You good? Because I'm gonna fix you when I get home. <laughs> when I leave at 9 a.m. tomorrow. 6 a.m., 2 a.m. Sometime tomorrow. We like to get to the airport 14 hours early. Oh, I was wondering what was causing the music to come on. Good. 14 hours early, just like everyone. Oh, yeah. Sean, it's a 6 p.m. flight. It's 8 in the morning. We better hurry up now or we're going to be late. One of my friends, 
is always so close to being late and never is. So let's see, I came from this side, I think. Oh, this is the gate I've been trying to open, huh? So there is the save point. This is the relink point we've been looking for. This is where we started. And we wound up going up this way. That's just so fun to do. Okay, so we didn't come from... What? Who's there? Nerd. Okay, I, got, I gotta stop looking for relinks. So we had to have come from... Do we not come from this way? Because obviously I just opened this door, but I recognize... No, it must have been from over here. Yeah, there it is. That's where we came from. We wandered up this stairwell. Saw this. Is this just where we came from? Yep. Yeah, where I can see Dan perfectly, but the footage is, is weird. Um, so, w one thing I want to be clear on. Had a little technical, serious technical hiccups this morning. Wait a minute. Where, how do I progress? Wait, what? All right. I was wandering around too much. Yeah, because I mean, like, when I do this, my character just looks up very stuttery. Do we make a slight backseat comment? You got a barbarian, but just you and no one else. The body motion doesn't match the speed of the running. Yeah, no, I, I think this, this, the, the, the look of the running animation is incorrect. It looks like we should be going really fast. Like, technically, my feet line up with the ground, but the amount of motion is a little off. Oh, of course, the compass. Oh, 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 oh my god. That's, that's just one of those, okay. Feels jarring. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, like, the walk animation could be made to match a little bit. But pretty quickly, as I've been playing, I'm not even really paying attention to my character very much. To the movement. So these are just better, but they have worse flame resistance. That's fine. I don't know what armor does, but armor generally seems good. And I think anytime you have a game where you have lots of very snappy action, you're going to have some things like... Where as I'm going twice, there's a stuttery interruption in the motion. Uh, yeah, and personally, I think that's fine. Do I get another save point? It's also kind of cute how when you when you run because you're an automata you hear the of gears. Very cute. fashion rising. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, if I go to my inventory, this is a good essential functioning. 
So is this like non-refillable stuff? So if I like... Oh, nice. You track? Oh, fuck you, dude. The audio for signaling when you're like... Is, is really clean. Like, this whole... in. People of Paris don't care at all. <laughs> there were people in here. Hello. Yo, talk to me. Yo. Shut up, everyone. Someone's coming. Oh, no. No. Another one of those evil machines. Oh. Do not fear. I mean you no harm. They always say that. It speaks too. Get out of here, you damn pile of scrap metal. Let's keep. Have you not seen what I've done to these automats? Yes. Worse than dogs at each other's throats. It's almost as if everyone is decided so the first time Angel spoke. No, we, we've been talking a lot, Zisakura. We're, we're a real person. Keep going. What happened in this Faubourg? The King Faubourg. His automats were merciless. If only we'd known what his new army was made of. We'd have all stayed home just like he'd ordered. Moody Swatili's family and his court of murderers. Monsieur. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> no, no. Oh, do you not? You're not gonna give me stuff? Oh man, I want stuff. I really got, also gotta spend these souls, dude. I am a leash. I don't have any more lines, Sean. <laughs> Stop talking to me. Yeah, fan varies, man. I feel you, dude. Yeah, because I mean, this this is the developers were spiders. I don't mean that it's literally spiders. That made this. There's actually this game was made by several tiny spiders dressed up as a trench coat programming at a computer. Uh oh. Inside anyone? Which my understanding is that spiders is a pretty small team. Do you know the size? Does anyone know the size offhand of the development team uh, at spiders? Barbarian says eight. Is that actually accurate, or are you saying that because spiders have eight legs? Barbarians' is joke. Okay, I was like, if this game was made by eight people, it needs to win game of the year. He says 20 plus. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is not a, a big team that worked on this. And so, you know, for me, I play a huge... Uh, employs more than 70 people in addition to freelancers. That sounds more accurate. Yeah. Great, great, great. Yeah, 70 is... 70 is not a lot of people for a game like this. Um, I 
And especially I'm working under the assumption that every single person there was working on this game the entire time and so on. Come on, move. The wiki is outdated yet also correct. Yeah, anytime a wiki says number plus, I'm like... Alright, wiki. Alright, you got it. If that's what you mean. Couple bad dogs here. Oh, hell yeah, here we go. Now we're linking back to the start. Now we're linking with portals. Let me make sure I understand how all this is connected first. Yeah, so, so whenever there's just not that many developers that are trying to take on a task like making a fully 3D game with really tight controls... <laughs> And a story with cutscenes and all this shit, like, you know. My expectation is that there will be little bits of polish that are that are lacking. You know, for instance, this I can spam the dash animation and it looks kinda weird. It's fine. I, I don't really care. I mean, at the end of the day, for for this kind of game, I am interested in the feel of combat. I am interested in the world and the art style, and much less on, oh, I can upgrade this shit. Hell yeah, I get 11 more damage. Is that my baby cat? I'll require bronze ingots. Let me just keep upgrading this, because I like this a lot. I need two bronze ingots and cast iron. Ah, huh. Hi, sweetheart. The Spiders is the same team that made Greedfall. What? You coming up? Oh, someone was on the heating pad. Someone is a very high temperature cat. Wait, where are you going? I just got you up here. All right, goodbye. This cat's weird. So, let's see here. Do agility and agility, because the weapon I like scales with agility. Hi, Sheriff. Oh, he's a little cat. Oh, he's a little cat tummy. Boutique. Uh, oh, yeah, I completely forgot about it. Oh my god. Just get up. Come on. Come on. Yeah. The same developers as Greedfall. Oh my god. And while we're doing this, I'll remind you that this game just came out today. Our bot is posting regularly in the channel. You can click on the link if you have any interest in checking the game out. I'm playing it on Steam. You can get it there. Hi. Oh. 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 Oh boy. Oh, nice. Okay. Sheriff, do you have anything you'd like to say? Sheriff. Hey. Mm-hmm. Yep, tell me more. It's a really interesting analysis. Alright. Barbarian says, one day we'll have a relationship like Sean has with his cats. Dude, like, I got so lucky. This little one is just such a snuggler. Both of them took a few years to get really cozy and really snuggly, because we never really force them to do anything. If they didn't like being picked up, we don't pick them up. They come to us, we give them lots of pets, lots of years of love and trust build up between us and our little babies. And also little tiny bits of training. You know, like with Sheriff, we can tap on things and she'll come. 
So just bolt on over. Oh, what a good cat. Uh-oh, she recently discovered the laps. Anytime I cross my legs, she sits down like this and she just stares at me. Oh, well, let's just keep playing then. Cognac frock. Cast iron. Oh, I can actually purchase this, huh? I keep hitting my recharge super early. God, I love seeing numbers. Ow. Ooh, ow. Ow. <laughs> okay. All right, Sherbert. Sure, I'm going to move you, okay? I need to move you. God, you are, like, really cute today. Okay. Broken Pipes, I'd like to pet the kid. I, I would, too, but I also want to play the game. And the, this is... This is the biggest uh, difficult decisions in my life. Yeah, you like how I said, ow, and she was like, Row! <laughs> she's, she's the closest thing to a stuffed animal I've ever met. Flame grenade. Oh, very well. I'm going to go the long way around. Shit, I, I froze myself. Oh, that was so close. Pick it up. You pick it up and place it in your purse. So there's the shooty boys up there. So good to do those refreshes. I mean, it feels insanely good. What do I have on the other one? I have the pistol. Great. Is the fill on the targeting reticle? Uh, the the diamond shape is an indication of how soon until they get stunned and I can do a crit. Sorry, I just had to answer a question. I had to answer submission critical questions. What am I talking about? Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, that's that's their that's their. Yeah, it's their critical strike meter. If it fills up, I can crit them when I hit them. And you know, this is what I mean by like it's really like it just feels very gamey. There's just a lot of, like, I'm monitoring this gauge and my stamina gauge, and then I want to time the refresh on the stamina gauge, and then I also want to refill ammo and time uh, my attacks, and I'm trying to get in range, and, I mean, there's also passives I can apply to my weapon that lasts a certain amount of time and charges. Like, I can even charge this up. I haven't really done this very much, but this does a lot of extra damage. Tribute to the Marquis de Lafayette by Monsieur D. To the tune of Avec les Jeux dans le Village, 
When Lafayette commands, we answer as one allowed. I don't care. Je ne care pas. Joel says, hey, tonight, is there something in particular you do when you lose motivation in playing video games? T.Y. Yeah, oh god, I, I have rising and falling motivational issues all the time. All the fucking time. Oh. Ah! And sometimes it's okay to just be fucking demotivated to play games. Someone that professionally does this shit, man. It is A-OK -okay if you're just like, dude, I just I just don't want to anymore. What is this new guy? <coughs> Russian ally says je ne care pas is the most American thing ever said in French. Trey Wee, on I mean. But um, I, I have found over my life that how I'm feeling and where my motivations are lying. Ah. How I'm feeling in terms of motivation. I only let be an input into my decision-making. I don't let it guide my decision-making. And often what I find is that my motivation to do something comes after I start doing the thing. So, I'm going to use today as an example. Um, and this happens to me with streaming all the time. Where I'm like, man, I just don't really want to stream today. Oh. I kind of would rather just be chilling. Especially recently, where, you know, we just have had to do a lot of work stuff and, like, you know, house moving stuff. I can't do this at the same time. Recently, we've just had to do a lot of stuff because we're going out of town. I have to rent a car, so I had to do an update for my license at the DMV, which was a whole thing. <laughs> like, um... And so there's just been a lot of things eating up my time that has nothing to do with work or stress. It's just like life stuff. And then I also had some stressful stuff occur because that's how life is. It's just stressful things and stressful news. And sometimes when I sit down to play uh, and stream on air, I'm like, dude, I would so much rather not stream. Yesterday, I was like, man, kind of don't even want to go live. But you know what? I went live and when I was 10, 15 minutes into that draft, it started to pull me along. Yeah, nice invisible wall. Or this game. When I started to play it, I knew... What I knew about this game was it had the premise and world and um, some concept art and some screenshots that I'd seen. I was like, I am really interested in this art style and world. All right, that's what I knew. I also knew that it had that sort of deliberate RPG style combat. It's become very popular in the last 10 years. And I didn't know what else to really expect. And by about 45 minutes in, specifically when I started to get other weapons and fiddle with the recharge, now I actually don't want to stop playing. I have to stop playing because I'm going to need to go to an airport. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I have to. And so I try to, in those times that I'm feeling really demotivated... Try to set aside some time where it's like, I'm going to play this for two hours. And I'm going to make myself do it, even though I don't really want to do it. Um... And so I think that that's something that I think about a lot with all my work, all my entertainment. Sometimes I, I'm feeling a little blah. And there are times in my life when I've actually written down 
what are things that are interesting me right now? Hey, there's that great book series that I need to pick up and read. Wait, where is this? Where the hell are we? Dear Jacques. There are times when there's books that I'm interested in reading. Games that I've started playing that I haven't finished. All sorts of things that I find that if I just write them down, and I'm just like, dude, I feel no motivation. Ugh, I don't want to do anything. I feel, I don't know, maybe I'm having some bit of depression. Maybe I'm just feeling lethargic because I just worked a lot. And during times like those, I'll be like, okay, let me go check on my list, and let me just get a little bit in. Like, if I get ten pages into a book, I'm generally just going to read that book for like another hour or two. Here. Okay, so if I drop down here, and I come around this way, this is a straight link back. Let me actually go on a run. But I find if I just start making myself do stuff, it takes me about 15, 30 minutes. Nice. Yep. So there, there's the save point that we've been at. Went down the right, relinked here, went back around, relinked here, and then we are relinking all the way again here. Nice. And I find that there are some things that I just literally physically can't do if I'm feeling lethargic and demotivated. A good example is sometimes I just am not in the mood for other people. And I like playing Dota a lot. But you know what? If I'm really feeling super exhausted, I've been playing the Command & Conquer Remastered Collection Covert Ops Missions on Hard. Such as you're going on vacation? If so, that's exciting. Yeah, dude, I um I technically took like a week off in July where I went to Las Vegas and then I went camping and then I was back streaming. And camping was fun and Vegas was fun. But I did not sleep a lot during those periods of time. <laughs> so So I'm being smart, I'm going to Yellowstone, and then uh when I return I'm taking a few days to actually rest. And then I'm going to take, uh, for the rest of the year, I'm just on. Oh, this guy looks like he'll fucking kill me. The rest of the year, I'm just on. I typically don't take days off on holidays. But, um, Thanksgiving. Oh, I'm on fire! Feels so good. Need a holiday to recover from your holiday. I know those feels. Well, I did a dumb thing, Pyrophoria. I took zero days off, except some weekends sometime from the start of the year till that July trip. I mean, that, I really like streaming. And, like, I was playing a ton of Elden Ring, which is incredible. But I'm also streaming Elden Ring while talking for six, seven hours at a time. Which... You know, requires some energy. This guy hates the nap he's taking right now.
And so, I, I've, I've been really kind of hungry for some do-nothing time. And then I went to Vegas and went camping like, uh, God, what's the word for it? A fucking dumbass. <laughs> Fire Spoon says, hey, this is good for branding. Oh my god, 99 months in a row. Fire Spoon, merci beaucoup. Happy 99, Fire Spoon. And thanks warmly for sticking around. This feels so... I, I literally can't tell you how pleasing it is to dash around and then to plan a combo, get overheated, hit Y, and then you just keep going and going. And then you're dashing around, you do your combo again, and you hit the Y button, and you're trying not to accidentally stun yourself. Because again, if that cold gauge fills up, you get stun around it. Oh, I forget. Second one. See, I got frozen. Gotcha. Is this on PS4? Um... You know, I I should know this. Investigating. PC, PS, and Xbox. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's available on... It is available on all things. Click in. Is this link back to the other starting area? Okay, I see. And compass. I generally don't even really need the compass in this game. I just pop this. Jean, the vocal song, the workshop. PS5 series. Spot series and PC, no PS4. Nice. Hey, Barbarian says, holy crap, I've been avoiding my phone for most of the evening, and I see the queen has passed. Yep. Yep. Learned about that one right this morning when I woke up. Someone hid upstairs. I just need to find a way in from the outside. <laughs> oh, I see how she would know that. Because there is an entire area upstairs. Got it. And as is the case, a lot of times we will suggest everyone. We're just going to be focused here on our good old gaming. Our good old gaming. I'm going to equip whatever has the highest armor. Diane Breaches. Oh, dude, look at my fucking pants, dude. Hell yeah. I'm going to tend to focus on the game and this sort of thing because, let me tell you, of all, of all things these days, whenever there's a big event in the news, there is too many places to talk about it. Way too many. So we'd like to be one of those locales. Oops. Factory key. Sometimes reading is essential. We'd like to be one of those places where you can get away from some of the stress and bustliness of on the news. Our Baron says, yeah, apologies, focusing up on the game. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Yeah, I, I never want you to think that this is somehow... Well, you have failed us by bringing up this news. When really, um, people will bring things up regularly, topically. And we will regularly, topically talk about things going on in the news. I just think it's very... 
important to have incredibly deliberate structure and time and places to do those things and not to let every single location be the functional place for every single type of discussion. But we're plenty happy to talk about stuff on here sometimes. I mean, for instance, I know war in Ukraine still going on. Got a lot of friends from the StarCraft days in Ukraine and Russia. I have friends that family that have had to exit the country, Ukraine. Really difficult time. Hope everyone's holding up all right with regards to that. Just remind you that, uh, you know, if you're interested in supporting, there's a lot of really great humanitarian bronze ingot when we have the cast iron. Okay, so we're going to boutique and we're going to purchase bronze. One. Upgrades. Did I sell it? Shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Alright. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. Alright. I want to remind all of you that there's a lot of really great humanitarian aid and places to donate that are Perfectly excellent for extending support to the people that are affected. What do we sell? We sold our upgrade material. I don't know if it was physical damage caused by successful fully charged attack. I'll do this one. Yeah, I, mean, I hope I hope my friends here in Ukraine are holding up all right. Factory key used. Oh, it's that guy there. Oh, I didn't I didn't upgrade anything. Oh my god. Alright, yeah. Hope you're all holding up alright with all the stress. And I hope our hope our community and our stream can be a nice little place for a lot of you to come to de-stress. Unwind. I want your pal Sean completely. How do I? Oh, there's only one available for purchase? <gasps> oh my god. Alright, whatever. I'm making the mistake. I hope we're serving you well here. That's what I'm trying to say while I stumble my way through. All things. All right, we'll we'll just we'll just do a mix of power and agility because we're not sure what we want to do. at how dynamic you can be in these combat encounters. Dude, I mean, this is so good. JD is a boss. This is basically steampunk French Revolution Dark Souls. I would say, um... I met. I think steampunk-ish is is right. I, I don't know the correct term for all the punk stuff. Whether this is steampunk or diesel punk or mecha punk, <laughs> I, I I really mess up the the proper verbiage. I believe that this is largely. Oh yeah, clock punk. That's right. This is this is a clock punk. It doesn't fucking matter. You are. 
it's an interesting retro futurism style world. The combat feels some Dark Souls, some Devil May Cry, some very, uh, reminds me a lot of the old school action games that I would play on the Genesis. Get up there somehow. Because, I mean, in something like Dark Souls, you, you'd have, like, a single attack, and then you'd wait. And then you'd attack, and then you'd wait. For instance, in this game, I do not have a block. If I get a special weapon that has block as its special ability, I can do that. But this whirly attack I just did, that is on my L2 button. Frost Grenade. And you also have the ability to sort of like active reload works in the Gears of War game. Reload your stamina. Which I'll show again and again because it feels so good. See how I'm dashing around and you'll see my green bar, my endurance going down. When I overheat, when it starts to dump back down again, I can hit a button to instantly refresh it. But I need to be careful because if I do that too many times, you see that blue circle? It's above my health bar. If it fills all the way up, I get stunned. Because basically what in lore I'm doing is dumping coolant onto my overheated body. And yo, this makes the combat feel fucking awesome. And I did not get this for the first hour I played. And once once it turned on, like, I genuinely do not want to go <laughs> to do packing. I want to invent a time machine and play this for just a few more hours. Okay. And there's some there's some oddities with some of the polish, like this this walking animation. I feel like the exaggerated motions of the walk do not match the speed of the walk. So this is like minor polish issues like this, or if I like spam this attack button. See how I'm about to run out of stamina? Oops, and... Oh shit, I'm hitting it at the wrong time. If you hit the coolant button too... Ow, fuck, too early. It makes it take way longer for your stamina bar to start recharging. What I mean by this is let me let me dash a bunch. So Y is what lets me use coolant. And notice that if I'm hitting it a lot right now, I'm staying overheated. So I can't run. I can't use any of my attacks. And then if I let go... See how long it took to appear? It's pretty sick. Essence of a lesson spirit. Okay, so that is... So let's see. This is likely the way that I am supposed to go. And I'm going over here because I saw that this... Perfect. I'm actually going to drink one of those ordinary oil vials. Dude. A bit about resonance, okay? My understanding of resonance comes from largely two sources. Mark Rosewater and his brilliant design blogs around the development of Magic the Gathering. And, most of all, David Wolverton, a.k.a. David Farland, who tragically recently passed away, but was like a famed writing mentor. And has this really, it's actually a pretty short book called Drawing on the Power of Resonance in Writing. It's like 80 pages. And it's just brilliant. 
And the idea of resonance is basically this. Brains come preloaded. And so if you are leveraging familiarity and comfort and understanding, that is just very pleasing to someone when you're experiencing their media. Or when they're experiencing your media. Let's go ahead and equip some fucking sweet hat. Do I want this one? Oh, shit! Diane Cape line. Or Capelin. But I prefer Diane Cape line. Jacket. Dude, look at this, man. I'm fucking yoked. Dude, I, I look good, dude. Hell yeah. Fucking fashion rising, more like. So examples of resonance would be things like Darth Vader, the name. It resonates with just sounds and feelings that imply badness. But, uh, why? What, what do we mean by that? Well, Darth sounds a bit like dark or death. Vader has the same word root as invader. Should I be here? Should I be back on the other one? Is this a bonus area? I don't know. Let's keep exploring. And so... It's this feeling of familiarity that's also used as a form of really streamlined communication. Another really common example is plants versus zombies. First of all, from a communication perspective, it's a tower defense game. You plant uh, plants, and plants don't move, which makes sense with towers being structures that don't move. And why would ever there be enemies that just slowly wander towards you like a drone? Well, a really solid example would be a frickin' zombie dude. No! Oh, I guess I can open this from this side, so we're okay. Hey, get out of here, sir. Dude, I have snuggled you like 15 times today. Including just now on air. And so, like, when it comes to first communicating the gameplay, using this language, we would say something like, ah, yeah, the, the narrative of plants versus zombies is really resonant with the gameplay. Because that, that narrative matches and aligns well with how the game actually functions. But then they they double down on the resonance and they start to have things like specific behaviors of plants matching our intuition of things. So like a walnut. And sun is the currency in the game and you have a sunflower that generates more sun. You start to get these internal resonances that, that build and it just feels very pleasing to play. And this comes all the way back to this game, where you are an automaton. You are a mechanical being. And this game just, like, absolutely... Oh, is this what I just wandered past? Oh, I feel like such a dumbass. Grade 1 Lasting Affliction Module. How do I get over to there, huh? Maybe around that side? That's where I came from. I mean, the fact that it is an oil barrette that I'm using instead of a health flask. And that the afflictions are retuned with the understanding that everyone's a freaking robot around here, man. Can I get into here? 
think maybe I can't. I can eventually get up there, it looks like. Interesting. Alright. Everything was just like... And it's just like... It's not that... Difficult. It just takes, like, just a lot of time and effort and thoughtfulness and, you know, just arranging everything. Um, well, let me see here. Let's, let's, let's pop back in the game. So if I go to... Yeah, I mean, like, vials of oil, this being oil... Insulation elixir because fulmination, aka electricity, is way more damaging to an automaton than it would be to like. Well, it just makes sense that it is more dangerous than normal. The fact that I'm using coolant to refresh my endurance, and when I use too much of it, it's overheating. You know, it, it's all of these little things that are just like really resonate. Because, like, for instance, th they could have very easily just said, yep, there's coolant. Or they, they could have very easily not said, yeah, there's coolant. They could have easily said, all right, you have an active reload when you overheat. Would have been the same mechanic, but it just would not have resonated as well. And I, I'm just always tickled when a game like commits in that sort of way. There's a guy to my right. Here. Who the fuck? Who who is shooting at me? Oh, hi. Oh ho ho ho, the robot came prepared. Fuck, I'm overheating. Dude, the overheat cool mechanic is the best ever. Poor gas, I'm gonna keep playing this game. I am actually leaving town on the morrow. So I'm not gonna be streaming anything for a few weeks. And then when I get back, I kinda gotta like reset and figure out what's gonna be happening in the next few weeks. There's a ton of games coming out, a ton of games coming up. Magic the Gathering, my main game, is as fun as it has been in a long time. Open this. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to navigate those situations, but lo and behold, that's how I do it. Pick it up, pick it up. Armored Core 6? When's Armored Core 6 coming out? Can I operate this machine? This is just the back end of the factory, yeah. Oh, I see. Got it. Hunter on Twitch says, It feels like people often undervalue the work it takes to effectively and seamlessly integrate something familiar, stamina, exhaustion, in a new, interesting context. And you feel it when you try to do it. Because the thing about when things are really resonating is that you're not even aware that you're being communicated to. So for instance, Darth Vader. N no one needs to sit down and go, and you see, it's because Darth is just, he's bad. Because you know the words dark and death, do you understand? Like, 
you just hear Darth Vader, and you go, oh. And then he's dressed in all black and has a cape and an unsettling breathing pattern. And your brain just automatically goes, oh, this guy's bad fucking news. Oh shit, that's not the button. And in a game like this, where it, it, it's almost the forefront of the entire game, right? Like, you are. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. You, you hold on to the ledges in this game. <laughs> oh, oh, features in this game that don't normally exist in these style of games. Got it. Okay. Alright, I, I, I'm terrible. You know, and games do a really... Like, this game is very... Like, forward. That this is a game about automata. And it is the crisis that everyone is dealing with here, here in the world. And so as a result, the fact that your character is an automaton... Oh, that's, like, really relevant. Oh, fuck. I just didn't hit the button. Oh, I could have gotten a sneak attack on you. But when you look at something, I think Magic the Gathering is a really good example of this. Over there. The steam pump. I will have to go around to get to it. What steam pump? Where and why? For what reason? Look, something's glowing. I'm going to go get the glowing shit. Jump. Jump. Like Magic the Gathering, you have you have a dragon. And you can use red mana to give it plus one plus up. It doesn't explicitly say that it's breathing fire, but it feels a little bit like that, you know? Or there is like, you know, a, a, an ooze abomination or a scavenging ooze where you can spend mana to delete a creature from a graveyard and it gets larger. Oh my god, and you just have this this feel of an ooze devouring dead uh, things and detritus from the forest floor and getting bigger and getting bigger and getting bigger. Dude, that shit is just fucking cool. And, like, you, you don't need to do this. And when I say need, I don't mean it's not beneficial to do this. What I mean is, if you had a game like this that you were making... Um, actually, let me do a better example. Like, if you... We're making a game, actually sure, like this one. You might say to yourself, okay, well, we're going to need at least, like, you know, 20 hours of content. We're going to want to spend a good amount of time designing. Oh, shit. All right. I'm... Let's heal up. We're going to make sure, we want to have at least, like, 20 different enemies. We want to make sure we have at least five different bosses, right? There's this feeling of like, okay, well, at a bare minimum we need to have this stuff. Like, if you had no bosses in this game and it was three hours of content, everyone would be like, ah, oh, it's lacking. But then you hit that level of need. And if you take that and then you build resonance on top of that shit, and you go the extra little bit of... Oh my god, I can't believe I missed this. Go a little bit extra just to polish. To make things a little tighter. To just keep going. It's so easy to justify, no, we don't really need to spend the time on this. When actually it's one of the main things that makes games, and, and people feel connected to those games, and feel like something really special is happening there. All right. Uh, uh, Ghosty, uh, are you here? Ghosty, let's, let's do a prediction. I'm going to start a prediction here. Prediction is, 
Will Day9 beat the boss this time? Yes, he's got this. And they'll give me the hater points. Very good. Very good. Uh, ghosty. I liked your uh, prediction. We're going to wait the minute till the prediction's out. And, I mean, the perfect example is writers in games like this. Writers primarily are not sitting down writing dialogue for a game. They're thinking about the world. Think about this place where we are in. We are in the factory that produces Automaton. And by saying, oh yeah, there's this mad king and there's this, this, this mad scientist that's helping the mad king by building these Automata, oh my gosh. And the writers sit down and think up a setting and think up a world Oh, fucking shit. This is what allows an interesting location like this to exist. And look at these set pieces. Look at this thing that I'm currently orbiting around. It looks like a carriage that's going to be hauling these various automata about. And that's fucking sweet. like what writers do a lot, is they try to think of these interesting moments and scenes and ideas that exist in this game that allows artists to be like, oh shit, I'm making a carriage to transport automata. And the automata are made out of these kinds of materials and not these kinds of materials. And here's the time setting in which it was made. Yeah, dude, I understand the combat system so much better. Grade 1 fight or flight module. Don't need that, because I've never been frightened. Like, look at all these various objects in here. The fact that it's like a forge where things are made. And all these different kinds of, like, you know, chassis that are half composed. I mean, this area is fucking sweet. the burn haters. <laughs> feel that. Feel the burn. Alright, so we only have about 15 more minutes left, so I'm just gonna go ahead and jam up my Agi. Can I... Okay. Any more bronze ingots, man. And I feel like, you know, when you start to, like, come up with an interesting world and a setting, and then the outfits start to match the world and make sense in the world, and the weapons feel connected to places and people, they're not just like, oh, a sword. It's like, you no, know, this is the sword typically used by... Oh, hi.
It's just so pleasing. Oh shit, there's a guy right here. He died and I just like dashed way out of the way. Hey, little kitty cat. How you doing? Okay. Oh, bronze ingot. Okay, and then I need to... Oh my god, yes. Okay, so I, I now have the ingot. Sheriff. Dude, this cat is... Sweetheart. Sweetheart, no, no. Just give give me like fifteen more minutes. Let him come up. Okay, so probably going to need to head this way. We went up and that led to a little roundabout. I don't see anything noteworthy up there. Alright, cool. So while we are on the last little bit of time or I, Shondo Calrissian. Head to Yellowstone. First, I have to drop my dog off at the dog hotel. Which is going to be hard. Well, we have these last little bits of time. Ah, I see. This links back to there. I did want to just remind all of you that this game, Steel Rising, by the developers of Greedfall... Who I understand are working on Greedfall 2, I believe. Spiders. I can reactivate it. Voila. That should work. <laughs> okay, I see. It needed to be stopped and then fired back up. The name of this game is Steel Rising. I would not quite call it a Souls like. It has some familiarity with that, but the combat is really. I mean, it's just incredible. Incredibly pleasing, fast paced, action heavy, gamey combat. I see, that's where I came from, so I need to just. And the weapons have all had really interesting, different sets. Oh, I just, I just am having a blast with it. And what, once you get the hang of it, you'll know that I have not really died in a while. Although it does appear I'm about to do that. There we go. It's just incredibly satisfying. If you'd like to check it out, we have our bot that is messaging in the channel. It's currently out on Steam. It's also on PS5 and Xbox Series XS. XS Best. <laughs> it's on the Xbox Series. If you're interested in checking it out on PS5, Xbox, I would love to see what this game looks like on those platforms because I am playing on my gaming rig that, after six years, is finally starting to die. So I'm actually playing on the low graphics settings. Dude, overheating and using coolant. Fucking fools. Boom. Oh, shit. Please die. Yeah, the, the, I, I, I want to also say that I think the naming scheme of the Xbox is one of the hardest things to wrap my head around. Like, you can say it to me and I can memorize it, but it was the Xbox and the Xbox Series X, then the Xbox One, and then the Xbox Series X and Series S. Did I get that right? And PlayStation, did I miss one even? This is the one right in the front.
Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I'm short. Oh, come on. You know what? I'm going to sell some shit. Sell. Equipment. I don't think I'm going to use the fire chain. I don't think I'm going to use the nemesis claws. All right. Hell yeah. I don't even know if I'm supposed to go here, but I want to see my new upgrade. My new yoke. Hey, what are you doing? Oh my god, these... My children. Let me, let me actually just run away here. I like to sit. Alright, let me use my compass. Let's see where we need to go. My arm is the compass. See, that's what I mean. That's fucking really cute, man. It's cute. Oh. <laughs> See, I mean, let me tell you, that's what I mean by resonance. You could have like had the character like pick out a compass and go, mm-hmm. Let me Oh, this way. Instead, their fucking whole body is used as the compass. That's hilarious. Oh my god, that's so fucking good. Let me check my compass. Oh. <laughs> oh. Let's start with that with a shot of his crotch. I want to see it all tucked up in there, man. <laughs> Hello. Bon sang. Oh, well, I'm British. Peace. I was given orders to come here. An automat that talks. Look at that outfit. Ah, mais je te reconnais. You're Vaucanson's dancer. I saw you perform in Versailles when you were first presented to the Queen. Oh, yes. Let me tell you, this game came out today, and literally just maybe 90 minutes before we began the broadcast, the Queen of England passed away. And so, all this talk about what's going on with the Queen and all that, I mean, it's just, the timing is uncanny. I have been sent by the Queen. Sa Majesty, is she safe? Yes. She is at the Chateau Look de Look at my hat! It is guarded by machines. I'm so mysterious. <laughs> what has become of the guards? There are no longer any human guards. <sighs> His own troops. He's no better than a rabid dog. Oh, God. I must find Monsieur de Vaucanson. He holds the secret to the tireless automats. Your creator? Well, that makes two of us. And it seems we have both arrived too late. He must have gone scurrying back to his master. I was only able to find this note written in his hand. It's nothing of any use, though. Only one thing's for certain. Wherever he went, he didn't take his horse's carriage. He left the key. Let's go into his carriage and see if he has any weird, creepy texts on his phone. Making havoc on the esplanade. So I saw, yes. And a little too closely for my liking. It's a miracle I escaped alive. Just by les Invalides, I saw one take a volley of gunfire. Hold for an instant, then carry on as if nothing happened. But Need those no ice machine, bullets, however resilient, is indestructible. These automats must have a weakness, some vital axle or gear that we can target. I don't suppose you would know, you who share their nature. No. Blast. That what do you mean? We just we just beat the shit out of them. Hoping to shed some light on the matter, but to no avail. <laughs> I'm uh, listen. If only I had listened to the abbot. Dude, I'm like so good. But perhaps there's still time. Listen to me. 
You must find Abbe Grégoire. He knows all about Vaucanson and his machines. This is like good accents him? in the voice acting. He took it upon himself to carry out a well-intentioned but perilous mission. If he's still alive, he'll be seeking refuge at the Société des Amis des Noirs on Place Saint-Méry, not far from Les Halles. Here, I mean, that's... Take the key to the carriage. It will no doubt be... A that's a good thing. English accent and a good French accent, man. I must attend to a matter of the utmost importance. Like, I can't believe... They're switching between that leave, shit so seamlessly. arms are calling for the Marquis de Lafayette as their general. And it is my duty to answer their call. Go down the elevator like a badass. Let's see you go down. Go down that elevator. Oh, he's gone. Damn. You ask, sire, the reasons for my disquiet? Do you forget that it was I, Vaucanson, who made this machine with my own hands? The cursed night at Meudon. What I saw, I fear, may never forget. It would have been good enough for poor Dauf Dauphin. Give him his soul to God. And yet, no, he had to beat the letter ends here. Your Marquis de Lafayette. I guess killer, Monsieur. Gagliostro. Alright, I'm going down. Ah! And I'm saving and I'm dipping for the day. Quit game. Quit game. Once again, everyone, I am calling it Thursday. And I'm gonna need to go get ready. Uh, I, I actually had an extraordinarily good time. Almost a like a surprisingly delightfully good time. For a game who I, I was interested in playing due to the fact that the world and art was interesting to me. I was not quite expecting the combat of the gameplay to be so satisfying. I should actually probably begin exploring some other weapons too. Next weapon we get, we'll, we'll swap out. If any of you are interested, it's available on Steam, PS5, Xbox. Warm thanks to Nacon for sponsoring the stream for the day. I had a delight playing. And if if you are interested in this kind of game that has combat as a central focus, I would recommend the crap out of it. Recommend the heck out of it. And with that, I'm going to go. So Crusader said I just watched one of your MTG drafts on YouTube and you said... Be better. You better have a good time and participate, or be banned. So this is my mandatory participation. That's good, Solo Crusader. I've been watching you. Close call. Let's I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream for the day, and I will be back on September 26th. I am out for the next two weeks. First to Yellowstone, and then to this chair to grind whatever game and TV show that I may see fit. Hope you have a wonderful time. When we're back, we're going to be just continuing to stream and broadcast for the rest of the year. And I look forward to joining you. Goodbye. Goodbye, my darlings. Goodbye, my darlings.